Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at Noon starts now. A major thoroughfare in southwest Detroit is shut down and DT is on site after folks who live in this neighborhood heard an explosion and say they smell natural gas. We'll have the latest on the investigation. But first, we are watching Storm Tracker 4 for you this afternoon as there's the potential for some severe storms. The weather tops our show this afternoon. I'm Everard Casme. Thank you for joining us. Let's uh, turn our attention to today's forecast as we give you a live look outside through our sky cam. Meteorologist Brandon Roos standing by with a look at what we can expect. Yeah, Everard, we are looking at cloudy skies, so that sort of prohibits the serious warm up that you need for strong severe storms a better chance tomorrow but certainly not ruling anything out today as again you can see just a blanket of clouds over the area and temperatures right around room temperature low 70s even some upper 60s like Port Huron and here is that storm tracker four. we do have a thunderstorm warning coming out of the Grand Rapids area these storms capable of 30 to 50 mile an hour winds and some pretty large hail along with tons of lightning and those downpours so still way west of us we're watching for primarily 1 30 2 o'clock the trajectory of that line of storms is more headed toward the I-69 corridor, maybe M-59 and north, middle upper 70s, and again, some isolated uh, storms even farther south through the late afternoon and evening. Everod, we do have a marginal risk for severe weather today, and the best weapon and tool that you can use is the local forecasters app, interactive radar, all of the warnings, updates, everything you need to know right there. It's free. Just search WDIV in your app store. Everod coming up a better severe risk Tuesday. Stay tuned. All right, Brandon, we know you'll keep us updated. Let's get to some breaking news that we're following now from Washington, D.C. The U.S. Capitol Police say that they have arrested a 44 year old man from California who had a bayonet and a machete in his truck and it had white supremacist symbols painted on it. Donald Craighead was arrested around noon or excuse me, around midnight near the Democratic National Committee headquarters. The arrest comes less than a week before people are set to gather at the Capitol for a rally in support of the hundreds jailed in connection with the deadly January 6th Capitol riots. Also breaking here at home, Ford and Canton Center roads are closed after a deadly crash in Canton Township. This is video from Sky 4 over the scene this morning after the crash, and you can see two cars there involved. Heavily damaged, a 38 year old woman sadly did die from her injuries and a 46 year old man had to be taken to the hospital. He is expected to be OK. As for the intersection, there's no time frame as to when it will reopen, but we will keep you updated. And now to a developing story from southwest Detroit, where a problem underground uprooted a street and caused part of a, a building to have to come down. Local force Priya Mann joins us now live this afternoon. And Priya, uh, what building is this and what are you learning about the situation that led up to it? Well, Everard, the bottom line here, it's going to take some time before we have any definitive answers. I'm here on 4th Street. Just take a look behind me. This is a very busy thoroughfare that is now closed here at Fort and Woodmere as the city of Detroit, the Great Lakes Water Authority and DTE investigate. Now, Saturday night, neighbors described hearing what they felt like was an explosion. When they came outside of their homes, they said they started to see the road expanding with either gas or another chemical that was emitting fumes at Fort and Dearborn roads were completely closed as officials investigate. Neighbors also say they smelled a very strange odor. DTE saying this morning that natural gas is not to blame, that there's no evidence yet of a natural gas explosion. They're leaning toward this possibly being a water main break, but the bottom line is they need to get underground this building. So the building needs to be demolished before investigators can get a clear sense of what's actually happening here. Of course, neighbors very frustrated, concerned for their safety, saying they're not getting a lot of information we spoke with State Senator Stephanie Chang just a few moments ago. Take a listen to what she had to say. They're going to do the investigation. I know that DTE has air monitors on site. I know that the city, EPA, state, everyone has involved and engaged um, and that the city is leading the effort as the incident command. Um, so it's important for people to know that agencies are responding, but I also think it's important that residents know what like that it, most importantly look out for your health and look out for your safety 
Yeah, so a very busy scene here in southwest Detroit with a lot of unanswered questions this morning. I have just learned that there will be a press conference in a few hours. We're hoping to hear more from officials on what they've learned. In the meantime, if you live in this area and you're concerned, there's a hotline that you can call. Eagle has a pollution emergency alerting system. That number, 1-800-292-4706. And if you smell gas or you suspect there's a gas leak in the area, you're urged to call DTE. That number, one 800 947 5000. Of course, we expect to have much more information tonight at 5 o'clock. Reporting live from Southwest Detroit, I'm Priya Mann, Local 4. All right, Priya, thank you for keeping us updated there. Let's go to Flat Rock now, where testing continues after a leak from the Ford plant sent gasoline into the sewer system. City officials say that they're still testing both the city's sewers and homes that are in the evacuation zone. The city engineer says a recent reading shows fumes are nearly down to zero in the sanitary sewer, but there are concerns, new concerns about the water in schools and homes. Some people have seen discolored water coming out of their taps, but city officials say that the water is safe. You're concerned about our schools, as are we. Our schools are continuously being monitored and they are at this time clear of contaminants but the testing will continue in our schools. And when people open their taps, they get a little bit of cloudy water or a little bit of brown water. But if you let your, your, uh, uh, like your kitchen sink or your laundry tub faucet flow for a little bit, it will clear up. So it's not a, a danger to anybody. And it's not, definitely not related to the gasoline leak. Well, we should point out the leak has been stopped, but there's no timetable just yet for when people might be allowed to return to their homes. We're following a developing story from Detroit's east side where a mass shooting has left two people dead and four others injured. It happened last night at a family gathering on Halleck right near Davison and Joseph Campo. Police say the victims were standing outside when somebody drove by and started shooting. A woman in her 20s and a woman in her 60s has died. The other victims are in stable, serious, and critical condition. Right now we have no information. Nobody was here at the scene when we got here. The victims were all privately conveyed. Everybody scattered when the police arrived. We just don't know what happened. We were looking for the community to come forward. There's no word yet on a motive or suspects, but police are asking for anyone with information to come forward. And now let's get you updated on the coronavirus. We are expecting our next coronavirus data update sometime this afternoon. But in the meantime, our last report showed that there was another concerning rise in case numbers. This was just on Friday when the state reported 6,095 new cases of COVID-19 over the past two days. And that averages out to about 3,047 cases per day. 59 deaths were reported. But that also includes 50, uh, 44 from a review of vital records. And take a look at this chart. It's going to help you get a sense of where things are headed. This is the seven day moving average over the past three weeks. We started uh, on August 27th, averaging about 1,700 cases per day. And then on Friday, we saw more than 2,100. President Biden, in other news, is heading out west today, combining presidential duties with politics. This is video of the president departing this morning for the events in Idaho and California. In the meantime, back in Washington, lawmakers summer recess is drawing to a close and the president's agenda still faces an uphill battle. Chris Pallone is watching it all for us this afternoon. He has this report from Washington. Members of Congress will begin this week getting answers on what happened in Afghanistan, and we expect that Democrats this week will continue pushing the president's economic plans, but it appears that in order to pass them, they might have to overcome some dissent from within their own ranks. President Biden heading out west for presidential duties and politics, getting a look at places ravaged by wildfires before urging California Democrats to support Governor Gavin Newsom in his Tuesday recall election. It comes as the president faces increasing resistance to a vaccine mandate for businesses issued last week. At least 19 Republican governors have spoken out against it. The president's actions in a mandate hardens the resistance. The administration argues mandates are necessary to hasten the nation's recovery from COVID. Infections are now down 10% from the peak of the latest Delta variant caused wave. The requirements for vaccination are part of a 
long tradition that we have in this country of taking steps as a collective to keep people safe. In Washington, lawmakers are starting to return following the August recess. Democratic leadership has set deadlines this month to pass a $1 trillion infrastructure bill and a $3.5 trillion social spending plan. But not all Democrats are on board. I'm just saying that we should be looking at everything, and we're not. And that we don't have the need to rush into this and get it done within one week because there's some deadline we're meeting or someone's going to fall through the cracks. Secretary of State Tony Blinken will be on the Hill for two days of hearings starting today. Blinken likely to face tough questions on the administration's deadly Afghanistan withdrawal. The president continues defending the Afghanistan withdrawal, saying over the weekend that 70 percent of Americans were in favor of ending that war. In Washington, Chris Pallone, now back to you. Chris, thank you. Still to come, the FBI has released previously classified details about its investigation into the September 11th terror attacks. Up next, we'll take a look at what's inside of those documents.